Good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning, David, Raleigh, CJ, Diane, Sharon, <laughs> Georgia, Bob, John, and I don't think I missed and anyone me. else. But if I did, uh, we welcome you. <coughs> well, it is Palm Sunday, um, certainly a significant day to remember. So let's talk about the first Palm Sunday. And then, what happened a few days after that first Palm Sunday? On Palm Sunday, well, Jesus is a hero. And then later, on Friday, he's a traitor. On Palm Sunday, Jesus is revered. He's welcomed. On Friday, he's despised. On Palm Sunday, Jesus is a champion. He's a winner. On Friday, he's a has-been. He's a loser. On Palm Sunday, Jesus triumphantly entered the city with people shouting, as you all read just a few moments ago, Hosanna! Well, on Friday, he's also triumphant on that day. He is triumphant over the sins of the world. He's triumphant in his departure from this world. And he is triumphant in his return to heaven.
This bread represents the body of Christ. Remember Him as we eat together. This juice represents the blood that Jesus shed for the sins of the world. Remember Him as we drink together. Before we take up our offering, I would like to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. These words of Jesus that you all know so very well. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In His hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain, speak, mountain peaks belong to Him. The sea is His, for He made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come and let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Amen. We are the people of his pasture and the flock under his care. Let us never forget that. Amen. Well, once again, thank you for being here on this beautiful day. And as we talked about earlier, we know that Jesus is triumphant. And He will help us overcome the sins of the world if we believe in Him. We'd also like to say, of course, hello to our folks watching on Facebook. We hope that you can Join us sometime. Just a quick side note. Um, the flower on the cross, that purple flower, that is from last year. So that is um, still with us. I uh, thought that was, was kind of a neat thing, that the purple flower was, was still there. Now I'm going to ask you to complete a sentence. Now we've done these before, these exercises. I've asked you a question or to fill in a blank or whatever it might be. So just to answer this to yourself, I'm going to read something and you just 
Think of the answer in one word. Just one word. Life is a blank. Life is a, and you fill in the blank. So just think about that for a second. One more, just one more, that's all you got. Life is a fill in the blank. Now, I'm sure that there were different words, which we have different people here, we're not all the same. So we probably had different words that came to mind for life is a blank. But I think that there's one word that we can all use to fill in that blank. Life is a journey. No matter how you look at it or how you slice it, life is a journey. I think most of us here this morning would describe life as a journey. You probably do that very often. Life is a journey from the time you're born until the time you die and beyond the time you die and leave this earth. There's still a journey in there. There's a journey in this vast universe once we leave this earth. Now, today, we all took a familiar road to get here, didn't we? Whether you just drove up from Athens, came this way, you came over Jack's Creek, you came in from Winchester, wherever you came from, you took a familiar road to get here. Probably hadn't changed very much or very little. That road is pretty much the same all the time. But even though you took the same road, the journey was different. There was something along that road that was different. That's different every single time you take that road. The road can be the same, but the journey is not the same. It might be similar, but there was something you encountered on getting here today that made it a different journey for you. And every time you take the same road, it's a different journey. Now, we've gathered here today, and we have been granted a privilege. We've been granted a privilege to travel down the road that Jesus traveled, and we've been granted the privilege to follow Jesus on his journey. So we have the road he took, and then we can also go along his journey. So if you would, get your Bible or the Pew Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 21, or you can just sit back and listen. There's a little outline in your bulletin if you want to refer to at some point. Matthew chapter 21, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. The triumphal entry. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd sped, spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. 
Now this was a familiar road the disciples were walking on what we call that first Palm Sunday. It was the road to Jerusalem. They walked the road to Jerusalem a number of times. And they knew that as soon as they reached this town of Bethany, they would soon come around the Mount of Olives and there it would be the city of Jerusalem. The city at this time would be overflowing with people that were going to celebrate the Passover. And Jesus knew the road. He'd traveled to Jerusalem a number of times. From the time he was a boy, Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to the feast, and as a man on a mission. It was a wonderful road to the people who were traveling it, going to celebrate the Passover, a wonderful time of celebration. And as you came around the mountain, again, there was the city of Jerusalem. You could see the temple maybe shining in the sunlight. You could see the towering gates of the city. So the road was known to them. But the journey on that first Palm Sunday was completely different from any other journey they had made to Jerusalem. As we said, the road is not going to change, but the things along the way, along the road, and the end result of traveling that road would be different than any other trip they had ever made to Jerusalem, especially for Jesus. And as we read, there we have this donkey colt tied up outside, <clears throat> and it was going to be used as a mount for Jesus to ride into Jerusalem. And then later today, we read that crowds of people would be waving to Jesus, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. So that road didn't change, but the journey, to say the least, is unique, isn't it? That journey on that day. The disciples know the road, but do they know the journey? Jesus knows the journey. Jesus knows what's along the road, and He also knows what's along the journey. And He said to the disciples, you'll find a donkey and her colt, untie them, and bring them to Me. And in the book of Luke, we know that the owner of the donkeys asked the disciples what they were doing. And the disciples did what Jesus told them to do. They found things exactly as Jesus had said they would be. And so they answered the donkey's owner just how Jesus said to answer. And they came back with the little donkey. They put their cloaks on this little donkey. A young donkey colt. Most likely, this little donkey colt had never been ridden. It probably been used maybe for some baggage. Not people. A little beast of burden. Mm -hmm. And since we know that donkeys can be, at times, stubborn little animals, we know what should have happened to Jesus when Jesus got on the back of this little donkey. But what would have happened to us didn't happen to Jesus. Jesus rides that little donkey right through the crowd, screaming people, no trouble. This little beast of burden carries the Savior on its back without giving him so much as a kick or a balk, this little donkey must have known in some divine way that he was carrying the Son of God 
on his back. So Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem as our Lord and King, and He also enters as something else that day. He enters as our sacrifice, does He? And as He rode this little donkey, Jesus knew where His journey would end. He knew where He was going. He knew where the journey would end. Today, the crowds are shouting Hosanna, waving at Him. But by the end of the week, that same crowd would be yelling, Crucify Him! Today, the crowds are laying palm branches at Jesus' feet. But by Friday, some of the people would be following behind Jesus <coughs> with tears streaming down their face. His blood and His sweat dripping under the cross. Jesus knew the journey and He still went forward. Jesus did all this for us. He walked the road. He endured the journey for our salvation. And we see the Scripture is fulfilled. The King comes gently, riding on a donkey, just as the prophet Zechariah said that He would. This gentleness, though, is strength. It is strength under control. But this gentle nature of strength of Jesus as a king, we also see something else. We see the humility of Jesus. The earth and everything on and in the earth is His. And yet He rides in humility on this tiny, lowly beast of burden. As we walk together the path of Palm Sunday, we realize that all of us walk down a road in this life. Each of us has a journey that's different from everyone else's journey. And although, as we said before, we know the roads Jesus is the one who knows the journey. It's His journey. His journey into our hearts. His journey into the hearts and lives of others. Sometimes we forget that our lives are not just about ourselves. It's not all about us. Our lives have something to do with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors our co-workers, our acquaintances, and even <clears throat> our enemies. And more to the point, life is not about the one. It's not about me. It's about the one, Jesus Christ. One earth, one Jesus. Your life is not about you. It is about the one who died for you. And it is about the people out here that need Jesus. That is our mission. Life is about what Jesus will do in our lives. It's about what Jesus will do for our lives. It's about what Jesus will do through our lives. As the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. The price that we live right now, Jesus paid for it. Jesus paid for our lives. There are the roads in life that we know so very well. We walk them day after day. We walk those roads year after year. The road of our daily lives. We get up, we go to work, we come home, we go to sleep, we get up, we go to work, we come home, we go to sleep, we do it all over again. But Jesus travels this road with us every step of the way. Every day we take that same road, but who knows what that journey is going to be every single day. What exciting thing might happen on that journey today? What strange thing might take place on that journey today? 
when might we take a detour? Where would that detour take us on our journey? <coughs> Jesus took us on the familiar road to get here today. But he does something different. Who knows what will happen tomorrow? Who knows what will happen when we leave here today? That same road that you took to get here, that journey going back will be different. Your mind will be different. Something will be different when you leave here today. We may think it's just another road that we take, but Jesus has something else in mind for us. He has in mind for us a journey into someone's heart. That's what Jesus wants for us. It's a journey into someone's heart. As we said, a friend, a family member, a co-worker or a stranger, Jesus has in store for us the journey of life. The journey is different every day we take that same road. On that first Palm Sunday, as we said earlier, Jesus knew that road. He walked it before. But Jesus also knew the journey that He was on. The road that led to Jerusalem was the journey that led to the cross. That was Jesus' destination. Along that familiar road, his journey took him to the cross. So let us remember that our journeys aren't really about us. Our journeys are about Jesus Christ. It's about his journey into the hearts of all mankind. We're going to have an invitation him today. What? better day, Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. What better day than if you haven't done it already to give your life to Christ. Our invitation to him this morning is number 492. It's called At Calvary. Let's all stand together. for letting us be here this morning for Roger's sermon on the journey our journey each and every one of our journeys we don't know where you want us to go but we know with your help you will lead us there guide us today when we depart for in his name we pray amen mm -hmm. 